everyone, it's Jill Foster here for Penny Black with my first in a series of 10 videos counting down my top 10 favorite stamps, dyes, techniques, and design ideas featuring Penny Black's new Timeless Collection. And today's video is all about the beautiful brushstroke floral stamps that are included in this collection. These are some of my favorite styles of stamps because you can get really wonderful no line watercolor look that doesn't even look like you stamped something it looks like you just painted um, a beautiful floral image they're also very um, fun and easy to do if you use a stamp positioning tool so my techniques today will be featuring that technique um, and I'm also going to be doing some sort of fill in stamping with leaves and different types of nature themed images around the primary focal point which is the brush stroke stamps. So real quick before I begin I wanted to let you know that I will have a full supply list at the very end of the video up on screen. So if you hit pause at that time you can check out all of the supplies in more detail including the ink colors, paints, paint brushes, stamps, dyes, everything that's being used. So let's go ahead and get started. This is the first card that we will be creating today and it features the slapstick cling stamp called Radiant. Now this stamp also also has an exact match die cut, the radiant cutout. I'm not going to be using that today, but I just wanted to mention that because it is very handy to have, and I will be having a video coming up that uses that too. So to begin, I'm working in my Misty stamp positioning tool, and this allows me to get multiple impressions of the same stamp in the exact same pl place so I can add lots of layers of color. So I first inked up the flower portion and I am using Ranger Archival mini ink pads and I chose these ink pads for a couple of reasons. One, the mini size makes it easy to get into the tighter spaces and love the colors of these and I can add a little bit of watercolor on top at the very end and it won't blend or lose any of the detail of my stamping. So I started with sunflower over the entire um, flower. Then I added orange blossom towards the center of the flower and I kind of rubbed with my finger around that outer edge so I didn't have um, like a stark ending point to where I applied that ink. And then I'm adding some potting soil color to the very center of the stamp. And I'll stamp it a couple of times with each color just to darken up the um, intensity and the darkness of the color itself. You can see how easy it is right there. You could stop right there and you would have a gorgeous floral image on your cards. You really don't have to add much with these. So now I'm just working on the stem and I'm using a couple of colors of green. I'm using some fern green and library green. Again, those are those archival inks. And I put the fern green down and then I added the archival green, but I didn't quite let it extend quite as far up onto the leaf. So while I'm working on just getting all my stamping done on this panel, I'm going to add my sentiment, and this is from the transparent set called Sentiments. And I'm just going to stamp this um, in my stamp positioning tool. I am working on a smooth, heavyweight cardstock. It's 110 pounds, I believe. Um, and it's just some I picked up at Michael's, actually. Now this sentiment I cut um, apart so I could do part of it in a nice dark brown and then the next part in the green that would tie into the color of the leaves. Now this is a very simple one layer card so I find by adding some special touches like a multicolored sentiment it gives it more of a finished look. Now I'm going to do some of that stamping where I said I'm going to fill in sort of around the image and a great stamp set for this is the floral silhouette. I want this to be very light so I am stamping it with my antique linen distress ink ink pad and I have to say my ink pad is really dry so I do multiple impressions but I kind of like that because it allows me to build up the color. I would rather it start out a little too light and have to stamp it a few times than have it be too dark or darker than I wanted it to be. So I'm just going to stamp that onto my panel, move it around and just stamp it in a few different places around the flower. The curve of this makes it really easy to use it in a lot of different orientations. So this is just a really handy stamp set, this floral silhouette, especially if you like this idea of sort of filling in around your flowers. And I also added just a little bit, a little touch of that up here in the other corner near the sentiment. 
kind of guide the eye across the card. So like always, you could absolutely start right there, stop right there, and it would look beautiful. But I wanted to make that flower just a little bit more of a pop on the card. And I also just love to paint, so it's an excuse to get my paints out. I am using the Make Art Blendable Dye Ink Reinkers by Wendy Vecchi um, to paint this in. And I picked them because they match the colors that I used to stamp the flower. So I stamped first with the sunflower ink, and now I'm painting here using the sunflower uh, make Art Blendable Dye Ink Reinker. Then I'll blend in some of the orange blossom and a little bit of the fern green color to paint on the leaf. But you could use any um, coloring medium here. You could use your water, just any watercolors. You could use Distress Ink Reinkers. You could go back in with colored pencils and color right on top of this. It's really whatever you have um, and whatever you like to use. For me, one thing that's nice with these is I do not need to add very much water or get them very wet. So because I'm not working on a watercolor paper, I'm working on just a heavyweight cardstock, this was nice. I did not have to get things too wet so the paper didn't um, sort of peel up at all as I was painting on it. And I just did a little bit darker color towards the center of the flower and on the leaf darker as it was closer to the stem. And just going back in with the reinker and some water on my brush to blend that out. And it is easy as that. The card was complete. So here's a close up of some of that painting on the flower and at the finished card. This is a 5 by 7 card. So um, you could certainly do this on a smaller note card too. So here's the next card that I'm creating. This is another 5 by 7 card. It has a clean and simple look to it, but I just love um, sort of that pop of red on the sentiment. So to begin, we're going to stamp this using the Painter's Vase Brushstroke Stamp. I'm working in my Misty Stamp Positioning Tool. Again, all of these are onto a heavyweight smooth cardstock. And I am going to begin by inking this with the Garden Patina Ranger Archival Mini Ink Pad. And I chose specifically to have just the smallest portion of the vase sort of hanging off the bottom of the card. I did this for two reasons. Often when you have um, an image extend beyond uh, the edge of the card, it just gives a little more interest to it. So in doing a clean and simple card, something like that can make a big difference. It also allowed me not to have to worry about painting or adding a shadow down at the base of that vase. So if you don't like to do that or you feel a little nervous adding the shadowing under an image or an object, this is a way to avoid that too. So I stamped that onto a piece of um, post-it just a post-it note and with a sticky part right up at the top so that I could mask that off before I added my flowers. And those I'll be stamping with more of those archival inks. Now one thing that's really great about this set, because the vase and the flowers are separated, you could use this vase with any of your brush stroke flowers. You could also add any type of flower to it, a line art flower. It wouldn't have to be a brush stroke. Um, flower, but it does sort of carry that same look to it. So it's a really versatile um, stamp set to get uh, because you can use it with lots of different flowers. Same thing with these flowers because the vase isn't attached, you can use them in lots of different ways. So I started by stamping them with my lightest color of red, which is carnation red. And then now I'm just going in with the vermilion ink pad, which is a little bit darker. I'm using sort of the corner of the ink pad to apply it either to the center of the flowers if they're fully open or the base of the flower if it's sort of a profile view of the flower. And this just starts adding more depth and dimension. Um, to the stamping. And you can see how beautiful these look even before a person does any painting at all. You really don't have to. Now I'm not worried about the stems up here because I will just color those in with a dark marker at the end. So if they turn red from the ink pad, that's no big deal. And here I'm just using a Tombow dual brush pen. And I'm so sorry for my head there. I had to sort of peek over to see what I was doing. Uh, but what I'm doing is I'm just coloring that onto the center of those flowers. I wanted these to have the look of a poppy, so I wanted to have a dark center on those. So I'm just coloring with the marker and then stamping it on top. 
Any of your sort of water soluble markers would work for this. So if you have distress markers or memento markers, or like I'm using the Tombow dual brush pens, they all work um, for coloring directly onto your stamps. And then I'm also going to color those stems like I had mentioned, and that will start to really finish out this, this stamping. Sometimes if I get a little ink, either from the ink pad or the marker where I don't want it to be, I just use my finger to go ahead and just wipe that off the stamp. You could use a baby wipe or a paper towel too. Now I'll remove, remove that mask. And now I'm going to use these um, leaves from the Special Friends uh, stamp set. So this is not a brushstroke style stamp, but it has the best leaves in it for this. So I've just picked out some of those small leaves, and I'm going to stamp them a, sort of around my uh, flowers. And it just gives more color, more dimension, and just some more life to the image. It's sort of that fill-in technique where you can get a one-layer card. And it's fun to look at your stamps in different ways. Look for these sort of smaller leaves that you can add mixed in here and there. And once I stamp those, I just picked one more here to add down um, in this corner. I'm using pistachio memento ink to stamp these and I picked this ink for two reasons. I like the color, it's a soft color and I'm going to add a little shading with a Copic marker on top. Now this is probably my favorite uh, sentiment set from this entire release. It's called Grateful Sentiments and you can mix and match the different sayings with the larger scripty font um, thank you and grateful to make lots of different sayings and because they are separated like this thank you is separated from the smaller parts it's easy to do a multicolored sentiment so you can hear I did the thank you and now I'm adding you are there to hold my hand you could also use that same set to say I am so grateful you are there to hold my hand um, I definitely recommend taking a close look at that sentiment set because it I find I reached I was reaching for it for almost all of my cards now I'm going to just add a little more blending to the vase and to the stamping. So um, I like a real smooth look and I think this just adds another touch of that watercoloring. I'm using um, the reinkers used as watercolors again. I just put a tiny little bit on a palette and then I can paint it in. One thing that's kind of nice about this is if you have a safe place where you can put uh, whatever little palette that you're using, you can leave these um, sitting out for like forever. They don't dry up when they're on there. Um, I mean, I'm sure eventually they probably would, but I've left them out for days before, like a little palette, and you can keep coming back to it and have those same colors on there that you can reach for when you are painting and coloring. And again, I'm so sorry about my head there. I think I get excited when I'm painting certain parts and don't realize I'm sort of leaning over into the camera. I really do promise, try to be, promise that I try to be careful about that, but apparently not careful enough. So I did mix a little bit of Evergreen Bow, a Distress Ink Reinker, and I mixed that with some of the Fern Green here to add to that turquoise look on the vase. And then I will use some Carnation Red and Potting Soil, Garden Patina, um, or excuse me, some Sunflower, Fern Green, and Watering Can and some Barn Door Distress Ink Reinkers up on the top flowers. And all of those colors are listed um, at the very end of the video by which card they were used on. So if you have a particular card that you really liked and you want to know the colors for, just watch at the very end up on screen and you can hit pause um, to access that. Um, here I'm just adding that watering can reinker color towards the center of the flowers. And then I took a Copic marker, and this is YG63, and I'm just feathering on a tiny little bit of extra shading onto those leaves. Again, the painting portion of this and the marker portion are really optional. If you want to just stamp your cards and do it all by stamping, they turn out beautifully as well. To finish this off, I am embellishing it with a creative die from Penny Black. This is the bow set, and I just cut that from white cardstock and layered some of the pieces together and adhered them on the vase. 
Again, on a really simple one layer card like this, one small embellish like, embellishment like this will really pop and finish things off. And I put a little self-adhesive pearl on there as well. So here's another look at that finished card. I mounted it to a 5x7 note card um, so it would be ready to go in the mail. Now this next card is a standard four and a quarter by five and a half A2 size card. I wanted to show you that you can use these stamps on both um, sizes of cards. And this features the cling stamp called Softly, which is so perfect for spring. I love sort of the abstract look to these tulips, the very hand-painted look that you can get with them. Um, so I'm working again in my Misty Stamp Positioning Tool. And I'm beginning by inking up just the top of the tulips, and I'm using some Lulu Lavender Memento ink. I chose that ink just mainly because it was the, my favorite um, very light purple color that I have in my stash. You can mix and match which types of inks that you use um, with these stamps and that you use together. So here I'm grabbing a Distress ink, um, and this is the color of Seedless Preserves. And I picked that because I like the mini size for adding it to just a portion of that flower. And I also really like the color. The one thing you just want to remember is if you use uh, an ink like a Distress ink that reacts with water, if you do go back and do some painting on top of your stamping later, some of that will start to re-blend and reconstitute, especially if you add a lot of water, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just um, whether you want to have those details be more loose and blended out or you want them to be more distinct. And then now I'm just going to work on the stems. And I'm using some leaf green ink on those. And you can see because of the way that the stamp is made, you can get beautiful the look of beautiful shading even just by stamping it. Now next I'm going to use some of the small branches from this Butterfly Garden stamp set. I'm not using the exact match dies, but I just wanted you to see that they do have them. And I'm going to do that fill in or stamping around the brush stroke image with these. So I'm stamping the first one here using Saffron Archival Ink. I wanted just a really happy yellow color. And I'm going to do it on each side of the tulips. You can see with this card design, I am allowing my stamping to go off the edge of the card. And I think that just gives a really fun look for it. And I am clustering pretty much all of the stamping into this right hand bottom side of the card. Here I'm grabbing some more of those leaves from the Special Friends stamp set. I used those on uh, the previous card. And you can see they are just so handy for fitting in around these images and even more of those and just playing around with the placement. When I do this I usually always start with my largest primary focal point stamp first and then go back in and fill in around it. These I'm going to stamp again with that pistachio memento ink. It's just a very nice soft green color. Get it a couple of times just to darken it up. Just deciding here if I wanted to add anything else. I decided to add my sentiment. I'm using a die cut sentiment plus um, some more phrases from that grateful sentiment set that I used on the last card. This time I'm using the you are such a great friend and I combined it with Penny Black's brother sister creative die. So I could say sister you are such a great friend. Now I wanted this um, branch here that I had stamped to be look more like a silhouette or a solid stamp so I use a similar Copic marker color to just color those in. I didn't do any shading I just colored it in with a Y21 marker and here I'm using the YG63 just to add feather and some shading at the base of the leaves. Now I'm going to just add a touch of blending on top of these flowers and the leaves. 
You can see that for all of these cards, I am following pretty much the same technique and even the same idea for the layout with the primary focal point element and then sort of the fill in stamping around it. And this is a fun way to make a set of cards. So if you want to really get in and do a lot of different cards but not get bored in designing the same thing over and over, is you can take a technique, you can take the same basic supplies, like the same kinds of paints and inks, even the same similar colors, um, but you do them with a variety of different stamps. So I added that sort of shading and coloring onto the flowers and then I'll get the um, leaves and the stem down here below. And this would be a totally optional step, but I love to paint and I do really love sort of that extra depth and dimension and like hand painted, hand watercolored look that this step does provide to the image. If you're looking for uh, additional ideas on where to put that shading, um, I would recommend having the packaging that comes with your stamp just really handy right next to you while you are doing your painting. That can really help you with getting some of those ideas where to do the shading and darker colors. And that finished off that card. It was ready to be mounted to a standard A2 size card. Here is a, another idea, and the last one we'll be making um, in this, featuring the same techniques and um, some of the similar stamps for that background. This card features the beautiful flowers together. This is another cling stamp. This card is a standard A2, four and a quarter by five and a half. Um, and I love how this set just fills up, or this stamp fills up that card. This time I am inking this with Distress Ink, the Peacock Feathers color, right up on the blooms, kind of trying to avoid those stems. If I got some on there, just uh, rub that off. And I chose to do a Distress Ink on this particular flower, is that a Distress Ink is reactive with water, so I can go back and blend that just with a paintbrush and some water and all I have to do then is just get those tiny little areas if I want to do some extra blending to give it a looser watercolor look. I'm also using a memento marker on the stem here and that allowed me to just get around the blooms and apply the ink only to those areas. Next I am stamping those leaves. Those are from the uh, special friend set that we used on the previous two cards kind of positioning them around the flowers and one in this upper left hand corner. And then I'm just going to go in and blend some of these petals out with just a little bit of just water on my paintbrush. And I don't want to use too much water or paint because I am working on just cardstock, not watercolor paper. And then I will also take um, some Distress Ink Reinker used as a watercolor and make some of them darker. So there's no rhyme or reason except trying to kind of balance, not have all darker on one side or all clustered in an area. But I like the variation that this gives the stamp, uh, the stamped impression. You just get um, some dark little petals and some light and it just makes it a little bit more fun and eye-catching for me. This um, particular flower is just very charming. I think you could do it in any color and it would look fun. That would be another really fun set of cards to make, like if you like to give people a set of cards that they can use, is to use, say, the same flower and the same design but do it in all different colors. That would be another fun way to use your stamps. I'm adding just a little bit more of that shading here onto those leaves. and a touch on the stems. And for this card, I stamped the word with um, from one of our sets, and I'll have that um, up on screen in the supply list. And then I added um, the love die cut, so you get the with love for the sentiment. And here's another look close up at that sentiment and the card, and then the whole card here that was ready to be mounted to a standard four and a quarter by five and a half A2 size note card. I hope you enjoyed today's video, my first in my top 10 timeless collection um, of favorite stamps and dies, techniques, and that you enjoyed these brush stroke stamps and we'll give them a try. 
Here's a closer look at all of those cards. If you enjoyed today's video, if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and our blog and website. And I will link for all of those for you down in the YouTube description box below. And stay tuned at the very end are those supply lists that I promised. Thanks for watching. Thank you.